Hello, hello! For the last five years, I've been working from home and have had my fair share of miserable and unproductive days. So if you're trying to get out of a rut or you just want to hang out with me for a while, here is how I try to structure my day to make the most of it. I'm really guilty of this one lately due to the day seeming to have no beginning or end, but if you put your alarm far, far away, you'll have to get up to turn it off, and if you're nearsighted like me, it can be quite the journey praying that you don't step or hit anything on your way. To really seal the deal, you should charge your phone near the bathroom so you can finish with a splash of water on the face. Now let's get this day started. Personally, I am hungry as soon as I wake up, but I also know if I have too big of a breakfast, I can end up feeling bogged down. So I just keep it light with a slice of toast and some peanut butter. If you're really new to having quiet time, I've put some links in the description to YouTube videos that can fill this time nicely with some music or some peaceful sounds. I actually have my Google Home run through a whole routine of today's news, and that's pretty much the extent to which I pay attention to the current events, just so that I can actually get on with my own day and pay attention to the work I have to do. I've read that it's good to make your quiet time a designated place, but if you're short on space, something that helps is keeping your quiet time books and supplies all in one basket so that you can pack it up easily. This basket also gives others who live with you the freedom to put things away as well. I'm not advocating for making others clean up after you by any means, but I have found this to be a more helpful way to share the home. The dining set that I'm working on was gifted to us by Rove Concepts. We really love of this Lars table because it looks more like a work or office table than a dining table and these compass chairs are lightweight they're stackable but they're still welcoming and nice to sit in if you want to check out Rove Concepts I've put a link in the description and I just wanted to say thank you Rove Concepts for making the center of our home feel productive and clean I mean today it could be cleaner we cleaned up for our apartment tour video, which some of you might have seen, but this is how our table looks right now since I'm preparing to paint for my Sunday live stream. If you've been tuning into those, thanks for hanging out and crafting with me. In the past, I have finished many a moleskin dot grid notebook, then I finished a blank Shinola notebook, and now I'm on this gridded Stalogy notebook. And I love all three of these books, I just like to mix it up sometimes. With the Stalogy, I like that it's a bit wider, so I use that space to set up an hourly breakdown of each weekday, Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. This just helps me to have one task per hour, which makes me more realistic on what I can get done in a day. This last skinny little section is where I drop all the to-dos that I think of so that they're not spinning around in my mind, and then I'll leave the entire right-hand area empty so I can journal throughout the week. I'm the type that can start writing a sentence in a total rage, but then be calm by the time I drop the period. I love processing Processing my thoughts and emotions through writing. It's so effective for me. I kind of describe it as looking in a mirror and being able to speak to yourself constructively. Hence, I leave a great deal of space for my journaling. <laughs> You've heard this advice, I've heard this advice, but despite it, I have still gone so many days at home, makeup free, hair in a bun, in my PJs. But every time I make the effort to change into contacts and I dress up a little bit, I do feel better about the day. So you don't have to go full face, just start with maybe some eye cream and you can see what you're feeling from there. If I'm not on camera, I'll usually just do a little mascara and blush, but no matter what you do, just promise yourself that wherever you end up, you are feeling yourself because we're gonna have a good day. With my bullet journal, what I do is I cross off the hours as they pass and then I cross off the tasks as I complete them and hopefully they'll be totally in sync. Like the hour is passed and the task is done. If I'm behind on my tasks, I might put my phone on a timer so that I don't touch it until the timer is up or you can put your phone into do not disturb. You can just simply turn it over so you don't see it when it lights up. And if the tasks are finished before the hour is up, then I'll usually use that time to like have a snack, do some dancing, listen to music or a podcast and just chill out for a little while. That doesn't happen as often. Often I'm behind on my tasks. 
Whether I'm working hard or feeling sluggish, in both cases, I'm very unmotivated to cook myself a healthy meal in the middle of the day, but it's so important to make sure that you're still eating your veggies, getting good variety. More than ever, it's important to eat well because so many other freedoms that help our health are kind of removed from us right now. So my greatest advice with food, if I could give you one, is to pre-chop all your veggies. Take fried rice, for example. I have some leftover fried rice here, but I already have pre-chopped parsley, onions, green onions, these are frozen. This used to be an edamame bag, but now it has sliced zucchini in it. And yes, I do go for the pre-chopped garlic, pre-minced ginger. No shame. When everything is pre-chopped, I can finish a fried rice recipe in 10 minutes. I'll prove it to you. The days can really blur together when you're staying at home and you might forget when was the last time you vacuumed or called up a friend. These things all take energy, but if you put in that effort regularly, you'll be looking out for future you. Whenever I don't feel like caring for myself or the home, I just remember, future me deserves a clean workspace, clean clothes, healthy friendships, and I want her to have those things. So I put in the time now. I don't always succeed, but this helps me to try my very best. Dan and I have tried to make it so that we are done our work by dinner time. That way we have the evening to webcam with friends, watch a movie together, or realistically, we've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Dan and I are sharing our little island and I've been putting in some serious hours to pay for all our bridges, recruit new villagers, make cute outfits, pay off my debt to Tom Nook, play the turnip stonks. If it were not for lockdown, I don't think I would have been as into Animal Crossing, but I'm really, really into it now. And yeah, if you're also playing and enjoying it, please do let me know in the comments. I find the biggest challenge with working from home is that it's way too easy for the boundaries to get crossed over. Boundaries between work, play, rest, boundaries between being alone, being with other people. Ironically, I actually had a really hard time putting this video together because I'm talking about work from home tips and I was feeling so unproductive and so unmotivated. If you feel like working from home is not easy, you're not alone in that feeling. And I guess that's why I've been doing my Sunday live streams, just to try to like keep people company and show people that like they're not alone. If you want to tune into those, they're every Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. You can hit subscribe and the bell if you want to be notified when those happen. I really hope this video is some form of encouragement to you. You can do it. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.